Hello everybody and thank you for connecting to the class. I hope that you're having a good Tuesday um, and it's the start of the week so we're very early in the week. The weekend is very far so we still have a lot of time to work and sometimes Tuesday is more difficult than Monday. So I hope you're feeling okay. I hope everything is good. Thank you for connecting to the class. I know learning English is stressful and very difficult and there are a lot of books, a lot of grammar, a lot of teachers, a lot of schools um, and I understand it's very stressful but I hope I can help a little. I am teaching for the last 11 years and now it's a very good opportunity for me to try to help and also to grow online with the project on Facebook and um, I'm very happy with this opportunity. So it's very good for me. Um, I'm sorry if it's difficult to understand me. I'm sorry if it's very hard, this class. The class maybe is very difficult, but I hope um, you can understand me and I hope everything is okay. Um, the internet, I hope we have no problem with the connection because always today there's a possibility the problem with the internet, with the technology, with the Wi-Fi, with the laptop. Um, there's lots of poss Facebook, Zoom, there's lots of possibilities. So hopefully everything is okay. We have the family at home. We have six people at home and we have a baby and a dog. So the house is normally very busy and you probably are in a similar situation. Lots of people at home and uh, working from home. So it's a difficult time and difficult moment but I hope the class can help a little. So that's the idea. So I'll show you the introduction here. Um, as I said, um, it's a good opportunity for me. The class might be difficult. We have lots of people attending the class from different countries. Um, people from Brazil, Spain, Indonesia, um, Vietnam, Thailand. So it's a challenge for me it's difficult for me because I understand there's lots of people with different levels and lots of people with different uh, mother languages so it's an extremely difficult job but I try to keep in mind all the time um, this this factor and I hope you can learn a little okay um, so even today I think we have a group from Romania I think every day we have some people from Romania that watch the class and for me it's fantastic so hello everybody and last night I was walking in the city centre in Dublin with the dog and I spoke with one person on the street he was a bus driver from Romania living in Dublin and he lived in Italy before but his English was fantastic and he said his he learned his English from the street from the people and his level was very very good so um, there's lots of different ways to learn there's lots of uh, possibilities and lots of hope so it's uh, a good example last night then after that man I met two people from India and again the people in India generally have very good levels of English so very interesting today the weather is very windy and I'm a little worried for the roof I hope the roof can stay on the on the room because it's very very windy today and that's more or less the introduction so if you want to participate it's possible during the class if you want to participate to practice your speaking I invite you I invite two or three people we can connect during the class to practice some speaking and I can give you some advice and some recommendation to improve and this is a good opportunity for everybody because everybody can learn a little from the speaking practice so there's the possibility with zoom um, here is the ID for uh, the zoom meeting okay and also my ID for Skype so if you want to connect they are the details also in the event section on Facebook in the event section every morning I will put the code and I will put the link for zoom and maybe that's easier for you to connect okay so that's possible to participate for me it's a very good opportunity also social media so I have um, I'm hidden here so I have the YouTube channel because some people prefer YouTube and the name on YouTube is Ad Meliora 
and maybe that's a good possibility because I think a lot of people prefer YouTube and the same content is available on YouTube as Facebook more or less the only difference is maybe some pictures okay for pictures Instagram page the Instagram name is Admiliora and more or less the same content as well a little uh, information and you can see the picture from this morning here on the left so we have uh, Facebook we have YouTube and we have but Twitter is very uh, different and um, but it's the same content more or less on Twitter and everything okay so if you want to connect on the social media that's a good possibility and again today for zoom the ID and the Skype uh, code as well so let me show you my screen because at the beginning I want to give you a little introduction okay so I'll share the screen and every day it's very important and we do the same topics every morning I think we have a little problem with the computer so one moment I think there's a little delay I hope you can still hear me so basically yeah there is the document for the introduction and every day this document is very important some of you of course are very familiar with this document and maybe you at this moment could tell and could explain this document because you are so familiar with the document but for new people it's very important and even for regular people it's very important to continue and to reinforce the structures of English because every language has a structure and to learn English you really need to know at the beginning the basic concepts and the basic uh, technical vocabulary because during the class I explain a lot I mention a lot about the technical vocabulary phrasal verb preposition past perfect present perfect modal verbs present continuous past simple so at the beginning it's very important I introduce the basic technical concepts very very important subtitles are available on Facebook you can select the subtitles and captions and the majority is correct but there are some errors and some differences because it's automatic but it is a possibility if you want to connect with the subtitles okay so for me there are three categories when you learn English there are three categories that are very important the first category is use of English the second category are tenses the different times that we speak and the final category is just other grammar concepts okay so the use of English for me is very important and maybe the most important so I'm just going to zoom in to make it a little bit bigger so everybody can see um, for me the use of English is probably the most important area and in the use of English we have accents okay so different accents around the world and you can study you can read you can practice English a lot but it's no preparation to understand a person from Australia a person from London a person from Ireland the accents are extremely difficult and that's a big big area when you learn English so different accents are a big difficulty and for me it's maybe in this category the most uh, important okay so for example in Ireland there are a few accents um, and a few phonetic issues that we have for example me it is possible with the U is very strong for example Dublin butter bus must so the U in Ireland and Dublin is possible very strong and correct phonetically would be Dublin, butter, but so the U is very strong possibly in Dublin. Also the TH definitely is possible a different pronunciation. So phonetically it should be this, that, these, Thursday, those, but sometimes the sound in Dublin is like a D. This, that, these, those. So be careful with the sound in Ireland or in Dublin or with me with the th okay also the ou sometimes is very strong for example house mouse but phonetically it might be a little bit different house it's very small difference but in dublin and with me there's possibilities of two or three particular accent phonetic issues okay phrasal verbs probably some of you are familiar with phrasal verbs and that's perfect that's no problem but if you have never heard phrasal verbs it's very important that you are familiar 
with the concept of a phrasal verb because in English we have and we use phrasal verbs all the time conversation formal situation informal situation family friends we use phrasal verbs every moment every day and a lot and the explanation basically is a verb and a preposition okay remember prepositions are typical for movement direction and position so we have a lot of prepositions in at to over under up down so we have a lot of prepositions and prepositions form part of the phrasal verb okay and the concept of the phrasal verb is literal okay one it's literal but the second significance sometimes is completely different and there is a completely second significance and that's the confusion but the area of phrasal verbs is very important and one example is maybe to go ahead and go ahead the verb to go and ahead is the preposition so it's maybe literal but usually the context is you go first so we have a conversation but you go ahead I stop and you go ahead so basically it's a verb and a preposition with different meanings in different contexts and they're very flexible and we have a long list okay the next item the next area are idioms and idioms are like expressions or phrases in espanol it's phrases hechas so idioms again in conversation we use idioms all the time every day every morning family friends formal informal we use idioms all the time and they are a way to make conversation a little more entertaining a little more funny a little more enjoyable so idioms are important and one example is a senior moment so if I have a senior moment the significance is with the stereotype when you are old maybe you lose your memory or you have a bad memory when you are old it's like a stereotype so I can say this morning I forgot my phone I left my phone in my bag so I had a senior moment so it's a joke or it's a little entertaining to say and um, that you forgot so that's the concept of an idiom and we use idioms all the time okay and they're very good they're very good for conversation the next category and the next section are tenses okay so different times when you speak are you speaking in the present are you speaking in the past are you speaking in the future and you need to be familiar at the beginning with the basic concepts of the time okay in English we have the simple which is one action the present simple the past simple which is one action completed and the future simple one action you will do in the future the construction generally is regular for example I look subject verb I look in the present past ED normally regular ED I looked and the future normally will subject I will look that's the basic regular I look in the present I looked in the past and the future I will look but the problem or the difficulty we have a lot of irregular verbs so for example the verb to eat I eat in the present I ate in the past and I will eat in the future so the past we have a lot of irregular verbs and that's difficult you just have to learn you have to remember irregular verbs okay the next concept is the continuous so it's possible to speak in the present continuous one period that you speak continuously okay same concept with the future one period that you will do the action continuously in the future and the same for the past one action that you continuously did in the past the construction is the subject I you he she we subject extra verb to be auxiliary extra verb to be so I am eating and the verb in the gerund the gerund is the ing of the verb so I am eating in the present past I was eating past continuous and future continuous I will be eating okay so that's the concept of the continuous and the simple we also have the idea of the perfect <coughs> excuse me and we have two or three we have the present perfect which is one action that started in the past it's finished the present perfect it's finished but it's relevant and it's related and probably still continues in the present the construction is the subject extra verb have and the participle of the verb participle is the third column for example eat ate eaten so the third column is the participle 
that's the present perfect and the same example I have eaten my breakfast this morning it started in the past and it's finished but it's related and it's relevant to now because now I am not hungry that's the present perfect the next concept is the past perfect and the past perfect is usually in the period in the past before another action in the past simple okay and the construction is the same except have is the past I had eaten my breakfast before I had a shower so the secret and the purpose and the reason for the past perfect is usually before another action in the past simple okay so I had eaten my breakfast before I had my shower that's important and also it is possible in the future perfect I will have eaten my breakfast before I will have my shower so it's a bit advanced but that's important as well the other principle and main ideas for the tenses are the is the infinitive the conditional and the active and the passive the conditional in the theory for the conditional it's a little complicated in the book you have the zero conditional first conditional second conditional third conditional mixed conditional and in the book the rules are a little strict and a little difficult and it's a very hard area to study the conditionals but in reality in my opinion it's more flexible and it's a little more fluid and open and it's less strict in reality conversation basically it's connected with if and the different tense so if it rains today I will go to the city centre if I watched the match yesterday I would have noticed the advertisement or the, the result okay so basically it's connected to if and the different tenses uberia I think in Espanol something like that and that is the idea of the conditionals it's a little heavy for the explanation but in reality it's a little bit more enjoyable and a bit more uh, normal okay and then the other idea is the active and the passive so in other languages I think you have the rule or the concept of the active and the passive basically in English the active is the verb sorry the subject the verb and the object like an ordinary sentence I phone my friend in the present simple I phone my friend and then the passive we change the position so my friend extra verb to be is participle phoned by me so we change the position and that's the concept of the active and the passive okay so here you can see the example the man kicked the ball is the active and then the change the position for the passive the ball was kicked by the man okay great okay on Skype I think we saw a connection there on Skype but we will wait for a little and during the class after the section we can practice maybe some speaking but thank you for connecting and the grammar next so we have a few more concepts in relation to grammar you need to understand what is a noun and what is a substantive so what exactly is a noun and what exactly is a substantive basically it's a person a place or a thing house car brian pen book table jacket substantive 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 so we have a lot of substantives every substantive you need an article we have two possibilities the indefinite article a house pronunciation is possible a or a a house a house the second possibility is the definite article the house so specific the house so i want to buy a house any house but I want to buy the house, a specific house. So that's the difference between indefinite and definite article. So that's the article and the substantive. Also, we have an adjective. So the position of the adjective is before the substantive. And the function, the job of the adjective is to describe the noun. So the house, the big house, the expensive house. So adjective is before the substantive. I think in Spanish, I think in Portuguese, it's different position. But in English, to position, the adjective is before the substantive. Okay, so that's the concept of the noun, substantive, adge adjective, and article. Okay, um, adverb. Basically, the idea of the adverb is to describe the verb. So the verb to run, to drink, to talk. Adverb to run quickly, to drink slowly, to talk um, rapidly. Okay, so normally the adverb has the ending ly that's the secret so normally the adverb finishes in ly and the function or the purpose of the adverb is to describe the verb okay very very important modal verbs are a big area and modal verbs are very common in English and very important 
they are basically connected to ability possibility permission recommendation and advice so there's five or six areas obligation is another so first can is usually for ability so i can play the piano i can eat a lot of chocolate it's my ability okay number two it's possible for permission a question can i go to the city center can i enter the shop it's a question for permission so can is ability and permission okay could may and might also are questions for permission could i enter the shop may i enter the shop might i enter the shop it's a question it's more polite and it's connected to possibility okay first one can is ability second one could may might for possibility okay so i might go to the cinema i may go to the cinema i could go to the cinema possibilities options and they're the most typical context may and might are probably more polite and that's the difference between could may and might may and might are probably a little more polite and that's the only difference shall is very similar to will or should it's more formal and it's a little older shall we have a coffee shall we watch the movie it's a question will we watch the movie will we have a coffee okay so it's a little old but it is common and important to know should is typical for recommendation and advice so my recommendation to you you should play more sports you should watch this movie you should read this book my recommendation my advice the pronunciation of the next verb ought to the g is silent but the significance is the same as should you ought to play more sports you ought to watch this movie or you ought to read this book so it's for recommendation and for advice okay must and again the pronunciation in ireland from me sometimes it's possible must so it's very strong accent you can say must but correct is must so be careful in ireland with the pronunciation of you it's not a mistake it's not a problem it's just a little different okay so must is for obligation the modal verb i must collect the children i must watch the movie i must go to my friend it's obligation and i have no choice and the same is this is the same with have to i have to collect the children i have to watch the television i have to read the book obligation okay so prepositions as i said at the beginning prepositions basically are connected to movement direction and position okay so i am in the room i am on the chair and um, the computer is on the table the dog is in the house okay the ball is on the table under the table over the table below beside in front of talk to you okay direction travel again you're traveling but movement and direction travel to dublin so they are very important for movement and direction and you imagine every moment every day direction is so important movement is so important and position is so important so prepositions are fundamental and key also in connection to the phrasal verb usually they are associated with emotion so up is usually happy up is usually positive and creation and down is usually negative down is to destroy and down is sad so there is an association with emotion and the prepositions also okay so that's important to remember in the phrasal verb section okay good so that is important also you need to be clear with the difference between for example this area is very important um, and I'll zoom out so you can see everything so for example it is my house it is your house it is his house but the house is mine the house is yours and give the house to me give the house to you so the pronoun you need to be clear the difference between the possessive pronoun the possessive adjective and the object pronoun so they're the three that are the most confusing and honestly I have heard a lot the confusion many many times okay so you need to be very clear and pay attention especially the difference between he she him her his hers okay so that's a typical confusion and I recommend that you study and try to recognize and try to identify the object pronouns and the possession pronouns they are very interesting okay that is important also the difference between this that these and those so this is singular here that is singular away these is plural and those is plural substantive so this book 
here, this book, that book in a different position, plural these books and plural those books. So you need to be very sure and very definite with the difference, okay? Um, a little detail with another, other, the other and the others, very important detail. So another is usually for singular substantive, another day, another person, another week, another year, and other is usually for the plural, other days, other weeks, other years, other people. That's the basic difference between another and other. The difference here with the other is possible with a selection. When you have a choice of two things, do you want this coffee or do you want the other coffee? I will have the other coffee. So when you have a selection or a choice of two things, it's very typical, not this one, but the other one, okay? And here we also have the others. So the others is the group of people. So do you want to travel to the city with us? Or do you want to travel to the city with them? Or do you want to travel to the city with the others? Okay, so very important. The detail is very different. The suffixes and prefixes, in my opinion, are a big area and they help you a lot. If you study and are aware of the suffix and the importance of a suffix and a prefix, this will help you a lot because the typical confusion is the confusion between adjective, substantive, and the little detail at the end is the big secret, okay? So for example, the suffix ans is typical substantive, the importance, for example, so that's a substantive. I-Z-E is typical a verb to realize, to fantasize, to uh, monetize. So I-Z-E normally is the infinitive of the verb. A-B-L-E is normally adjective, manageable, okay adjective ly is typically the adverb quickly slowly so this is an important idea an important concept to recognize the difference between noun verb adjective adverb and i recommend that you try to recognize and pay more attention to the suffix and the prefix okay um linkers so you have one sentence and another sentence and we have a lot of vocabulary to link and connect two sentences and this is very important and it will help you a lot because we use linkers a lot. For example, however, furthermore, in addition, and, but, as well as, we have a lot of linkers and that's a big area to understand also, okay? And that's it. So that's the most important introduction for today. Also, writing is very important skill and ability and I recommend that you try to practice some writing and hopefully you can find somebody to correct your writing and again I'm available to check your writing and to try to help with some writing and show everybody the corrections and then exam preparation are very popular Cambridge exams the first certificate advanced certificate proficiency these exams are very popular and I have experience with these exams uh, preparing students and it's possible in the future we can create some classes so if you are interested uh, let me know and the IELTS exams as well are very important and very possible. Okay, so that's the introduction for today. Now I want to continue with this book. So this week I chose a book, okay, from home. I have this book and the story basically is an autobiography. It's a story about this person and he is a football manager and the vocabulary is very conversational and very good for informal and very very real conversational English that's the reason I think it's very good yesterday we started on the page here you can see on the screen and today we will continue a little okay so I'm going to show you where we stopped yesterday we stopped at barely you remember the explanation barely so I'll just review here I'll show you my notes barely is like casi nunca in espanol and also we have the word bear as an adjective and bare is like uh, naked. So you can say the room is very bare and the significance is the room is empty, almost naked, okay? So bare is the adjective for almost naked or empty. The room is very bare, the wall is very bare. It's possible with your one foot and two feet, you are, bare, you are barefooted and barefooted means you have no shoes or no socks. You are in your bare feet. That's the expression, okay? So you are in uh, your bare feet. 
so the significance is you have no socks you have no shoes and actually it's very dangerous because last night in my walk in the city center I was walking across the street and a nail was on the ground I didn't realize but my foot went on a nail so very dangerous obviously to go barefoot I had runners and I had socks but um, I was very lucky so obviously barefoot is dangerous barefoot is a bad idea and um, you could take my bare hands is the significance no gloves no protection you have your bare hands and again when you are working in construction it is not a good idea to have your bare hands to work with your bare hands so barely is probably the adjective and it means almost nothing so I have barely 10 minutes which means only 10 minutes I have barely I have barely any food which means almost no food so barely anybody almost nobody so very very important important word and here I had heard so that's the past perfect I had barely, so I almost had not heard of the company until I somebody told me okay so it's the past perfect and that's the reason for the past perfect it's the period before the next action in the past simple okay um doing something i didn't understand had brought the eagles crashing down so i will just read the end of this paragraph so you can understand the pronunciation and we will read first and then i will return to the vocabulary and the analysis okay so had brought the eagles crashing to earth as thoughtlessly as a farmer shooting pigeons but i've always believed that in life things happen for a reason and that day launched the most extraordinary years of my career after 42 years in football from northern premier league to barclays premier league i thought i had seen it all i was wrong okay so to bring somebody crashing to earth that's the expression okay so to bring um somebody crashing down is an option to earth so the verb is to crash and it's typical in the car you have a car crash okay and the verb to bring is when you take somebody okay and this incident can bring you down okay sorry I think we had another Skype contact but we'll do that later so the verb to bring and the phrasal verb is to bring me down for example the weather the very bad weather at the moment is bringing me down it's making me feel bad and it's making me feel sad that's the expression to bring somebody down that's one possibility for sad and the second possibility is um, sad and also maybe to your level so your behavior is very very good your behavior is very very good and this person's behavior is very very bad and the actions of this person bring you down to their level so it's possible for behavior and reputation but also for sadness because you're very happy and then the bad weather brings you down okay it's the same in the opposite to bring you up is possible to make you feel better possibly okay um so this expression when you are happy when you are dreaming when you are very very successful you are very high and then the bad moment in this context like the football the bad moment brings you crashing down to earth to reality so it's very creative very descriptive and i think you probably understand the concept more or less okay and um, again we say to bring you down to earth is typical as well so bring you crashing down is more descriptive but to bring you down to earth is possible as well okay and you can say about the person the person is very down to earth very typical expression and the significance is like very real very humble the expression is humble humilde in espanol so the person is very down to earth means they're very realistic they're very generous they're very considerate and the opposite is maybe arrogant okay very arrogant but very down to earth okay and um, there is another expression you could say salt of the earth so the person is the salt of the earth and it means very real very authentic person okay salt of the earth person which is possible and the significance is very real very authentic and very genuine person okay so he is the salt of the earth it's very typical in conversation okay here uh, thoughtlessly again the ly is the suffix so it's an adverb and then the l-e-s-s -S is another suffix means without 
you can say jobless homeless um, okay so jobless homeless basically means the significance without without a job without a home so for example thoughtless is the significance of without thinking so your behavior was very thoughtless you were very thoughtless you did not think about me you did not consider me you did not consi consider your friend and the pronunciation thought th th thoughtless and the t there okay so this is very advanced word thoughtlessly as a farmer shooting pigeons so the verb is to shoot also the farm in espanol is the granja and the farmer is the person okay the farm is the place with the animals it's the location the place with the animals the farmer is the person because normally the person the suffix is er normally the suffix er is the person and it is possible or as well for example doctor so you can have er or or and that's the person for example painter or doctor so it's a little irregular it depends you need to be careful of the suffix and that's another good example okay but here we had the previous word and i go back to the to the text i'm gonna go up to the top okay so again the verb to shoot which is with the pistol you have the pistol and you shoot but the past simple is irregular shoot shot okay and the participle is shot shoot shot shot so the past is shot and the substantive is a shot okay so it's very important with the pistol and it's also typical in sport if you play handball if you play tennis you say a good shot okay a good hit a good shot and in soccer or football a good shot okay so that is interesting and important and pigeon is the type of bird okay a pigeon um in life so the preposition in my life in your life that's the typical preposition for life and again remember the difference between the verb to live is the verb to live my life is singular our lives is plural and the verb lively or alive so the ver the family is very important for pronunciation and for the difference of the noun the verb okay um, and we did that yesterday you can check the video yesterday as well okay so the expression is to happen for a reason everything happens for a reason very typical expression and um, you can also say faith it was destiny okay it happens for a reason so the significance is destiny and we have another word in english faith so you need to be very careful because faith is the same as destiny or happens for a reason but we have another word which is faith so the pronunciation is almost the same practically the pronunciation is the same but the second significance is like religion you have your faith it's your belief okay so faith is your belief your religion but this word faith is your destiny okay um, and again this expression happens everything happens for a reason it's very famous it's very typical expression maybe for a tattoo or for um, a typical expression okay the next word is one of my favorites from the text definitely the verb to launched and that day so this day but that day launched the most extraordinary years of my career so the verb is to launch and maybe immediately you think of the verb to lunch so it's completely completely different the verb to lunch is obviously with the food at one o'clock in ireland we have lunch but at three o'clock or two o'clock in spain you have lunch but it's completely different from the verb to launch you can see the a to launch and the context is typical with the rocket nasa you know the big uh, astronauts and the the space company you have nasa and the typical with the rocket you launch a rocket i think in spanish it's maybe tirar so to launch a rocket is like throw a rocket but we use this verb in relation to your career so if you start your career you launch your career okay so it's the beginning of your career it's typical for career it's typical for a movie we launch the movie is like to release the movie estrenar similar to estrenar or a party if you have a if you have a new book and you are publishing the book you are releasing the book you are launching the book it's possible to have a launch party so the party to celebrate the start of the project the start of the book so it's very very important it's typical for a rocket 
it's typical for a movie to launch a movie it's typical for a party or a book okay so very very uh, flexible a launch party is very famous if you have a new disco or a new bar or a new pub you can have a launch party which is the celebration to begin the business okay in this context you can say a house warming which is a little different a house warming party so the verb is to warm and the adjective also is warm so adjective is warm it's the sensation you're feeling it's similar to hot you're very hot but you're very warm and the verb is to warm so the expression is a house warming party and this is the expression we use when you have a new house and you want to celebrate the new house you invite your friends you invite your family and you have a party this is a house warming party to give the house more warmth and to give it more feeling the substantive so warm is the adjective and the substantive is the warmth okay so adjective is warm but the substantive is the warmth and very important you can see the difference with the suffix so the th warmth okay so very interesting and very important so launch is very flexible again launch your career launch your book launch your movie very very important okay and um, my career so in spanish you say carrera so i think in spanish carrera is more academic so you study for your carrera pero in ingles it's more professional so my career is a teacher your career your professional career is your doctor you're a doctor you're a dentist you're a nurse that's your professional career but i think in spain it's more academic in english you can say your studies i finished my studies i finished my education or possibly i finished my academic career maybe but just be a little careful with the word career in english it's more professional your job your career okay after no problem that's just a preposition after 40 years in football in business okay so just the prepositions from is connected with two so from the bottom to the top so from and to and remember the difference between from and since since is usually one moment in the past since eight o'clock in the morning but from is usually two moments from eight o'clock to nine o'clock and here we have an example from and to okay another expression I thought I had seen it all so this is the verb I had seen which is the past perfect and remember the past perfect is usually the period before the past simple and here it's I had seen it all I thought okay and it's a famous expression as well and um, for example in conversation with family if I walk into the room with maybe yellow hair I change the color of my hair and it's a big surprise and my family say whoa now I have seen it all okay it's very typical in conversation I have heard it all I have seen it all so you are surprised with nothing okay very typical in conversation that's the reason I identify it here as well I was wrong okay wrong is basically the same as incorrect and you can typically say in the preposition in the wrong I am in the wrong I was in the wrong typical preposition and it is possible a verb to wrong somebody means to do something bad to somebody so if you wrong somebody the significance is you do something bad to somebody okay so it is flexible and it is important and here we say um okay so i sat on that flight i will read this a little that though was for the future as i sat on that flight north i felt confident we all knew money was tight at the club we were only flying as i had persuaded a wealthy supporter to pay for it but we had been on a good run and fancied our chances of getting and then it continues so these four lines are very interesting because we have a lot of interesting vocabulary in this section okay so first is the verb to sit and i think the majority of people understand the verb to sit typically it's the preposition sit down sit up so in school maybe the students are like this and the teacher says sit up so sit up is the instruction number one sit down is when you are standing okay sit down and i think the majority of people understand but the past simple is irregular sit sat sat okay so sit in the present and sat flight for an airplane and a flight the preposition is on on the airplane on the flight on the bus 
on the plane on the train because originally the plane was a surface and originally the train was a surface the bus originally was a surface and the boat originally was a surface and that's the reason because the preposition on is always associated with the surface on the table on the wall on the body on the face so that's the reason here it's on for the flight okay felt again so the verb is to feel I feel happy I feel sad I feel tired but the past is irregular feel felt so again another difficult irregular verb and we have a lot of irregular verbs so sit sat is the past and feel is the verb and felt is the past but you need to be very careful also because we have another verb which is similar in in pronunciation but completely different so remember to feel is the sensation i feel and felt is the past but there is another verb completely different caer in espanol to fall and fell so this is a typical confusion and you need to be very very clear okay so the verb is to fall in espanol caer and the past is fell so very important difference and this is a typical I have heard this error this confusion a lot so you need to be very very careful to fall in the present I, f I fell down okay and to fall and to feel in the present I feel happy but I felt so very very important okay that's so important the next expression is money was tight in the past money was tight or money is tight so tight I think is apretado in Espanol for example my shirt is very tight so it's this sensation my jacket is very tight but we use this expression as a metaphor for money it's a little insult so if the person is tight with money the significance is they are tacaño in espanol they do not spend money they are not very generous they keep all the money they are very tight okay because the wallet you know the wallet with the money it's possible to open the wallet but when the wallet is tight, it's not possible to open and it's not possible to spend. So it's an insult. The person is very tight with money, number one. But in this case, money is tight means that you do not have a lot of money. So it's a little different. If the person is tight, they are very mean or not generous. But the situation, the money, if money is tight, there is not enough or there is a lack in falta, a lack of money. So very interesting vocabulary, okay? So in general, tight is for clothes. Your jacket is very tight. Your shirt is very tight. You can say time. Time is tight. So I have a meeting at one o'clock and now it's uh, 10 minutes to one. So we have little time. Time is tight. And for the person, it's an insult as well. Okay, so tight is the adjective and typical for um, money or for clothes. And very, very important. The opposite is loose. Suelto, I think in Espanol. So the opposite is loose. For example, my jacket is loose, my shirt is loose, and we can say loose money or loose change. And the significance is money that you have extra, so you do not need this money. It is spare or extra, and spare is very important as well. Spare tire in the car is the extra tire so spare tire in the car is extra tire money spare money is extra money you don't need loose money very important okay and to spare five minutes is to give somebody an extra five minutes it's very flexible okay not a very good explanation excuse me i think a little difficult explanation but it is important loose and spare okay um, and tight so very important vocabulary and very typical in conversation um, okay here we had the past perfect the verb is to persuade so that is the verb to persuade it's to convince very similar to convince so you persuade me to change the class you persuade me to do something you convince me to do something number one okay so it's very similar to convince we have an expression to twist my arm so sorry for the spelling so the verb to twist for example the bottle of coca-cola you need to twist but the expression is to twist my arm and the significance is to persuade or to convince me so it's an idiom okay so to twist my arm for the party i say i do not want the party i do not want to go i want to stay at home and you 
twist my arm you say oh Brian it will be fantastic it will be great everybody is going to the party so you persuade me you convince me you twist my arm very typical in conversation and um, very good but there is another situation to twist the story is negative and completely different so if you twist the story you change the story completely also in the movie in the series there is a twist because you expect the story you expect something to happen but there's a twist something different happens okay so a twist in the story also you can twist your ankle because the ankle is the part of the body the foot and the ankle is the part of the body and you can twist your ankle so you can break your ankle you can twist your ankle and you can sprain your ankle okay break and break or sprain so very good vocabulary for physiotherapists or for somebody who has an accident when they're dancing at the party okay so that's to twist and here he had persuaded or he had convinced wealthy is an adjective okay and the significance is very rich everybody the majority of people understand rich a rich area a rich person a rich country a rich family the majority of people understand rich but the more advanced word is wealthy wealthy area wealthy man wealthy woman wealthy country and the significance is very rich okay very very important rich is possible for money and rich is possible for food for example you can say the chocolate is very rich or the profiteroles or the desserts are very rich but wealthy is only specifically for money okay and the substantive is wealth and we have an expression your health is your wealth that's a very famous expression so your health is your wealth that means your health is your uh, fortune okay so the most important thing is your is your health um, you can say a wealth of experience and the significance is a lot of experience you have a wealth of experience and um, also you need to be clear between health and healthy this is a typical confusion so health is the noun substantive for example the health system the health department in the government but adjective is healthy you are very healthy you look very healthy okay so the pronunciation again healthy good so that is important for sure and um, so I, I had persuaded past perfect I had persuaded a wealthy supporter to pay for it so what exactly is it so it is very important in English in this situation it's the substitution for the flight to pay for the flight so I had persuaded a rich person a rich supporter to pay for the flight also pay is necessary to preposition for pay for the hotel pay for the restaurant pay for the food normally when it's the substantive it's pay for and this is a typical error from Spanish to English pay for the food pay for the mobile phone pay for the television but if it's a person it's not necessary to I pay you you pay me you pay the doctor so pay me pay you pay him but pay for the food pay for the medicine very important a little difficult but important okay so pay the man pay the doctor okay no two but pay for the food so the point is it's very important the preposition here okay um the last expression is to fancy so you can see i fancied our chances our possibilities so the verb is to fancy it's possible a verb and it's possible an adjective the most typical adjective is for clothes or for fashion so your dress or your jacket or your clothes are very fancy and the significance is like very pretty very beautiful okay pretty beautiful um for example fancy party fancy dress party you need to be elegant that's number one um, but the verb is similar but it's similar to i like or i want so i fancy this chocolate i really like this chocolate i think this chocolate is beautiful i think this chocolate is fantastic i fancy this chocolate i fancy a holiday i really want a holiday uh, what do you fancy doing what do you fancy for food tonight what do you want so it's extremely common in conversation for family for every situation i fancy pizza i fancy uh, takeaway it means you want or you desire okay a little informal but very typical and in the past 
I fancied past. So the significance is really to want uh, or desire or like. And maybe in romantic situations it's very typical as well. So if you were in the disco or you were at the party and you fancy this person, that means you really like this person and the person's very attractive. Okay, so it's very typical as well. Okay, good. That's a good explanation of vocabulary. Um, maybe now is a good opportunity to practice some speaking with somebody. So I have spoken for a long time. I hope you can understand the vocabulary. I hope you can understand everything. And also, I hope somebody is waiting in the room. Okay, nobody is in uh, Skype, but maybe in uh, WhatsApp. But maybe I can connect with this person, Luth. Okay. And hopefully we have no problem with the connection. I think it's a little slow with the computer. And um, so I'll accept. And hopefully we have no little delay. And maybe if she's ready, I can call her. Updating. I have a possibility to surprise her and call her immediately. Or I can write first. Hi, can I call you? Sorry, my typing is very bad. I think I need some classes to type it's very difficult to type and um, so also the other possibility is for uh, zoom so if you want to connect with zoom I will put the code again now is a very good time to connect with the code and this is the opportunity to practice if it's one or two people we can have a discussion the topic can be obviously the pandemic you can explain your situation you can introduce yourself um, and we can talk a little about uh, everything and we can just do some corrections for the for the speaking okay so that's the code if you want and let's see I'm gonna call uh, no I don't think she's ready it's not fair to call so I think we had another person waiting as well Piroska and I can text her as well for him hi can I call you for me it's a very good opportunity and I think it's a good idea but no problem if it's not possible okay so now you have two choices you can continue you can go home you can sleep or we can uh, continue with the video and i want to show you a video for pronunciation and for practice so um first if you want to go remember everything is free and i'm very happy to teach but if you want to make a little contribution or a little support for me it would be fantastic it's possible by bizoom and with the telephone number that's one possibility the second possibility is Revolut the third possibility is the bank details if you want to make a little transfer of one euro or two euro it's a fantastic support for me or by PayPal as well that's an option okay so um, everything is free and I'm very happy to teach but if you want to support me that would be a great help as well okay and um, so I don't think we're ready with Skype that is a pity and I don't think we have anybody in the in the zoom okay no problem so now actually I want to do so oh perfect we have somebody Isabel so let's connect with Isabel and I will try to make the screen a little bit bigger and I know yesterday we had a problem with the sound so I will try just connecting with her uh, phone so one moment and I'm gonna stop the share for the screen to make it a little bit bigger hello so we're connecting to the audio and on my right I'm going to make some notes for the conversation as well just so everybody can see the corrections so we're still just connecting to the audio and hopefully this will be useful and it will be um, interesting hello Isabel uh, oh she's gone okay that's a pity no problem are she still there Isabel hola Isabel como estas no. <laughs> ah, hello. Hello, Isabel. Hola, ¿cómo estás? Eh, ¿Puedes? ¿Me escuchas? No. Okay. No, Isabel, ¿cómo, eh, ¿estás, ¿estás allí? No. Okay. Hello. Hello, Isabel. How are you? Fine, thank you. Okay, good. Thank hello? you. Thank you for connecting. Can you... Uh, yeah. intro can you introduce yourself a little can you uh, tell me your name or Hi. where you're from you. Hi. hello where where are you from 
Hello, Isabel. Hello. Um, are you from Spain? Are you from South America? Or where are you from? I'm from uh, Peru. Ah, okay, fantastic. And what time is it in Peru at the moment? Is it the morning or no, the... No, no, no. I'm from Peru, but I live in London. Ah, okay. Okay, fantastic. Um, and what is your experience of London? Do you like living in London? Uh, is it um why why do you think it's why is it nice do you think what's the best part uh, why is it, uh, no i uh, i am living here because uh, i i uh, i came here in 2001 yeah and uh, i was uh, uh, living uh, because i have three children no yeah and now i was uh, uh, Growing my children, no? Yes. Yeah. And, and now I am. Uh, I was working uh, teaching Spanish from 2012 to 2017. Yep. And now I am uh, working in a primary school, uh, like a teaching assistant. Okay. And um, do you teach Spanish in the primary school, or no? There's no connection with Spanish. Uh, I was teaching Spanish for nearly five years, but. Uh, not anymore. Okay, very there good. Is, there is a, 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 there was a, I had a, several children, a lot of children, but yeah. then I left because uh, that was only per hours, and now I'm working full time. Okay, and um, do you miss, do you miss Peru? Would you like to be in Peru more, or what, maybe you miss Peru a lot? No, <laughs> no, I, I, I like to go to Peru only for one month because okay. I have my, my grandsons in here. I have three grandsons. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I have my, my daughter. She is living with me. Yeah. Uh, 21 years old, Angela, and Luigi is 18. Oh, fantastic. Yes. And I have my family in Peru, but my, my brothers, my sisters, no? we, we, uh, we are a big family. Fantastic. Our brothers, Sisters. Super. But my mom, my dad. But I prefer to stay here. I I want uh, like Peru only for holidays. <laughs> and it's it's very um maybe far to travel to Peru. It's a long distance, and the flight is maybe difficult. Uh, yes, it's about uh, fifteen hours. I think. <sighs> That's a long time. It's a long time. Yes. And maybe Peru is nice. The food, the people, all that. They, yeah. they, you can't find any job there. Okay. Yeah. And for example, Spain. Do you like to travel to Spain for the similar culture, or um, because it's yeah? Yeah. Yes, I have, my best my best friend is from uh, Madrid. Ah, okay. Yes. yes. Okay. I I, I, have, uh, I lived. Have a house there. Ah, perfect. I lived in Madrid for a long time, and I returned to Ireland because of the pandemic. But uh, Madrid is fantastic. It's a it's a great. Do you prefer London or you do you prefer Madrid? Madrid. <laughs> and probably the weather. Yes, I like Madrid when you have the breakfast with your toast with the oil and the tomato. Exactly. That's nice. <laughs> and in relation to English, um, what is your experience with English? Did you learn English as a child or is it difficult for you? What, what do you think? I... Peru in a bilingual school. Yeah. But it's different from uh, American English with the uh, British, no? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's completely different. And I like uh, to uh, improve my English, no? Yeah. It's because you know, never <laughs> we we always uh, are learning. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And in London, what is the most difficult thing with the language? Is it easy to understand people or is it difficult to understand the people in London? No, it's, it's easy. It's easy. Yeah. More okay. easy than in America. <laughs> okay, super. Okay, Isabel, well, it was fantastic to speak to you. I'm just going to show the corrections on the screen. So now I will disconnect from the call, okay? And after the call, I will show on my screen some of the corrections, okay? So I hope you can see the corrections, but in general, your English is obviously super and you're, you're, it's, it's fantastic and you're doing very well. 
but I will just show some of the examples for the, the corrections and I hope that you enjoy the class. Have you any comment about the class? Is the class easy or difficult or any recommendation? Uh, for me it's okay. Uh, Yesterday, uh, yesterday I, I was that uh, I, I could only listen five minutes, yes. but now it's about... Uh, Fifteen minutes, but I try tomorrow to uh, <laughs> get on time. Okay, no, it's it's. Yeah, I like yeah. I like this class. It's, it's good. It's very good. Yeah. It's very flexible, and maybe it's the best class because you can come when you want. You can. It's it's very free, and you can do what you want. Okay. Well, um, thank you it's so. It's for different levels. Exactly. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Exactly. It's for different levels. Um. Okay, super. Well, thank you very much for calling and I hope that you have a nice day and I hope that you enjoy your time in London, okay? Okay, thank you, you too. You're very welcome and talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Okay, I think I can... Perfect. That was super. So that's just good practice for um, speaking and I like to do that. I think it's a good possibility. Um, now, I will just show you some of the corrections from the, cl from the conversation. So... Uh, she spoke very, very well. Isabel speaks very, very well. And there was one example she said about growing my children. Okay, so I think she wanted to say in London, her children have grown up. Okay, so probably in that situation, we say the children grow in the present and the past grew up. Okay, so that's probably the correction. So the children grew up in London. Okay, that's one possibility. The second possibility is her action. If she physically grows the children in relation to food, relation to education, in English we use the verb to raise. So she raised the children in London or she brings up the children in London, okay? So that's the two possibilities. Um, she raised three children in London or she brought up. They are phrasal verbs, okay? <coughs> she brought up three children. So very good examples. But again, her English was really, really good. And then several children, she said, this is irregular because we have one child, singular, one child, and two children, okay? The typical error, the typical mistake is children's. That's the error. So in English, it's irregular, and we say one child and two children, okay? So very important. So correct is several children. So it's necessary to eliminate the S because it's irregular in the plural. And then finally, just a very small, a very small correction because obviously easy is facile and mass facile in English is easier okay so more easy is probably technically incorrect and the correct way is easier okay but everybody understands that situation and it's not a big problem so super well done Isabel and thank you for connecting that was really really good and now I don't think we've anybody waiting in the in the room to participate no problem so we will go to a little exercise now I want to show you a small exercise with verbs and prepositions so you remember the importance of the prepositions in English this website is the British Council and it's very good for grammar and just a little exam or a little test for you now because we have been studying a long time so here is the test and it's you have to select the correct preposition for the answer so number one it smells so it is the subject the verb is to smell, like oler in Espanol. It smells something. So what preposition do you think is appropriate here? What do you think is the correct preposition in this sentence? It smells something coconut in here. Okay? And remember, the verb is to smell, and the substantive is a smell, and the adjective is smelly. Okay? So usually it's negative. Smelly is very bad. It's negative. The substantive is a smell. But what do you think is number one? It smells something coconut in here and in the text if you want to write in the chat you can put the correct word your answer in the chat okay so probably some of you have said like and that is the correct answer it smells like typically with the verb for the sense smell sound look taste it's typical with the verb for the sense we say smells like looks like sounds like um, so that is very important okay this one is also very typical and very important tax in Espanol is impuesto you have your salary and with your salary it's necessary to pay the tax okay so taxes like the extra money for the government and the verb is to base 
here it's the part here it is the passive remember the construction with the passive you have the extra verb is so the verb is to base okay and the preposition that is typical is very very important because this is a typical confusion and this is a typical error so what do you think is the correct answer and I am sure a lot of you will say in I am sure a lot of you will think in based in but in English it's based on the majority of the time based on based on based on okay so we normally say based on for example the story in the movies in the cinema the story is based on a real story okay so based on your opinion is based on the facts okay your opinion is based on so that is really really important the typical error the confusion is based in the only possibility for in is for the city okay so for example I am based in Dublin that is the only possibility because it's in the preposition for the city I am located in Dublin I am based in Dublin but the story is based on the other situations based on okay we promise so subject we the verb to promise to respond so what do you think is the typical and appropriate preposition with respond okay so you have the question and you have to respond and then a preposition so what do you think is the correct preposition here also within is very important within three days so the significance of within is the same as in so I will complete my work within two days I will contact my friend within one week so it's in the space it's the same significance as in a little more formal a little more advanced but very important as well okay so here you can write your answer for number three the correct answer with respond and the substantive is respond to I will respond to you the company will respond to you and um, so very important respond to okay I am doing the present continuous I am doing a law degree degree is typical with university it's your degree it's your uh, bachelorato similar it's in university your degree you need to be clear also with the temperature the temperature is 10 degrees in Espanol grados so in English degrees is grado in Espanol and it's a typical confusion because we have two words in English degree it's temperature and also a uh, grade is possible in English as well but grade is more for level in school okay or result marker okay so it is a confusion and it is very important the difference between degree so here I am doing a law degree specializing what do you think is the correct preposition with specializing okay and similar to number two very similar to number two but I'm curious what do you think is the correct answer in specializing for example I am a specialist English you are a specialist mathematics and here it's the same and the correct answer is specializing in okay you are specializing in geography you are specializing in okay our staff so this is the possession pronoun my my pen your pen his pen our staff are the workers in the company you have the staff the workers so our staff will provide the future the verb to provide present simple I provide past I provided future simple I will provide but our staff will provide you so what do you think is the correct preposition with provide okay and audio guides are maybe just the, the guide guia the guide or the instruction for the audio okay so our workers our staff will provide you and the correct answer normally with provide provide you with so now I am providing you with exercises the mother Isabel provides her children with food she provides her family with uh, with clothes or, or food so provide with okay it took me that's a very important structure like durar in Espanol so to make lasagna making lasagna takes me one hour the flight from Madrid to Peru takes 10 hours okay so here's the past it took me so the activity took me two weeks to recover influenza and what do you think is the typical preposition with recover okay so influenza the pandemic society needs to recover preposition the pandemic and the appropriate word here the appropriate question is from 
okay recover from the flu recover from the party recover from the weekend shall remember it's more formal and it's the same as will so will I ask and the verb to ask is preguntar and what is the typical preposition with ask I ask you a favor I ask you a book and the correct preposition maybe you know I hope and the most appropriate situation here is ask you for okay um, because with a person I ask John I ask you I ask me but the substantive for I ask John for advice I ask you for a pen okay and the next one is my favorite definitely my favorite because it's very typical and it's a little advanced so success is the noun okay successful is the adjective and the verb is to succeed and typically with the verb we have succeed plus preposition plus the ing of the verb okay for example doing eating so that is the rule normally the verb is to succeed we have a typical preposition here so you need to identify the correct preposition but the substantive or the noun is success exito in espanol and exitoso is successful but the verb is to succeed and also raising money is very important remember the difference yesterday between rise and raise and raise is my action raise my hand raise my question it's possible with money if you raise money you generate money for the charity for English classes you, you raise money okay so here it's like generating money so he had success we had success generating money but the preposition that is important is in okay also the local animal shelter is very difficult as well so the verb is to shelter it's possible a bus shelter and the bus shelter is the place where you stand you are waiting for the bus and you have the shelter so shelter is protection and cover from the wind from the rain so the shelter is to protect shelter the children shelter the animal so the animal shelter is the special place you bring the animal when they are maybe uh, in a dangerous situation okay so it's possible we have some errors but I think the majority are correct okay so number one we have an error with number one okay so let me check again it smells like coconut in here Um ah okay there's another possibility because like is probably not the best preposition so number one we have a second preposition a second possibility and pro probably you know it and maybe in Espanol it's the same huele de huele de coconut so probably the correct answer it smells of okay um, very similar to like but I think technically the best preposition would be of okay so well done that's a very good exercise and I think it's important to do some exercises every week and that's my idea for the moment so again thank you so much for connecting to the class and um, it's a very good opportunity for me um, to teach and to work again I'm really really happy if you are happy again and if you want to support me it's possible a little uh, donation of maybe one euro but if you cannot it's perfect I really don't mind and I understand a lot of people have lost a job a lot of people are not working so it's a very difficult time for people financially I understand but if you can and if you want to help and to support me it would be very very good because maybe in the future I will need your support but this is an option if you want okay so thank you so much and I will put the details in the video as well at the end in the comment so have a fantastic day enjoy your Tuesday the storm continues here you can hear the wind a lot of wind but um, everything is okay so thank you so much and have a great day and talk to you soon bye bye